There are two reactions that are commonly used to synthesize ethers. The first is called the Williamson ether synthesis, and this is just an SN2 reaction that is using an alkoxy group as a nucleophile. Here is a generic overview of the Williamson ether synthesis. You start with an alcohol and you use something like NaH or sodium, lithium, or potassium metal to deprotonate that alcohol and form an alkoxy ion. This is a reaction that we learned in the alcohol chapter. Once we have formed that alkoxy ion, we can then do an SN2 reaction with uh, alkyl halide or some other type of molecule that has a really good leaving group. Because this is an SN2 reaction, our alkyl halide needs to be primary or a methyl um, alkyl halide so that we can not have to worry about any kind of steric hindrance slowing this reaction down. And again, the X here doesn't necessarily have to be a halide, it just has to be a good leaving group. Here are a couple of specific examples of the Williamson ether synthesis. In the first step of this reaction, we're using something to just simply deprotonate the alcohol. And so that's going to give us the alkoxide. It looks like that. And once the alkoxide is formed, it's going to go ahead and do the SN2 reaction with, in this case, the alkyl halide. The O- is forming a bond with that carbon holding the leaving group. And there's another carbon on there as well. These reactions, it's kind of a little bit easy to lose track of carbon atoms. So maybe it's a good idea for you to use some sort of system for numbering your carbon atoms to make sure that you don't lose any carbons or add any extra carbons. So I'm going to use like a combination of numbers and letters to make sure that we're having all of the carbon atoms uh, maintained through the reaction. We've got one more example here. Here's an alcohol with sodium metal. Again, any one of these substances, sodium, lithium, potassium, or NaH, they will all work to deprotonate the alcohol make the alkoxide ion, and then the alkoxide ion comes in and attacks the carbon with the leaving group. So here is the alkoxide, and we have formed a bond to a carbon atom. I'm trying to draw a six-membered ring there. <laughs> Here's our structure. And again, um, it is kind of easy to lose track of the carbon atoms in these reactions. So numbering the carbon atoms definitely does not hurt to just make sure that you aren't missing any carbon atoms in your product. A, B, C, D, E, F, A, B, C, D, E, F. So that's the Williamson ether synthesis. Um, one of the really cool applications of the Williamson ether synthesis is that it is possible to do this reaction with a single molecule that has both the alcohol group and a good leaving group. Um, this will ultimately create a cyclic ether. So in this very first step, again, we're using, in this case, we're using potassium metal just simply to deprotonate the alcohol and give us an O minus like that. And then that O minus will attack the carbon with the leaving group. And this is definitely one where we want to be thinking about numbering our carbons here. So we are going to end up with our oxygen atom that is bonded to carbon number one, which is bonded to carbon number two, which is bonded to carbon number three, which is bonded to carbon number four, and we created a bond between oxygen and carbon number four, like that. That's not the best looking ether that I drew there. It's a five membered ring, so that makes it look a little prettier. This is a really cool reaction. Um, one of the kind of the caveats of this is that it really only works when you are forming a ring that has five or six um, atoms in the ring. So it's working to form a five or six membered ring. Not five or six carbon atoms, but five or six atoms altogether. So this would be considered a five membered ring. Anything that is larger or smaller than that, it's got some weird bond angles and weird steric hindrance, and it's just not very favorable. The second method that we have for preparing an ether is alkoxymercuration demercuration. And if you're wondering if this is similar to the reaction that you learned 
Um, last quarter, it definitely is. Last quarter, we learned a reaction called oxymercuration, demercuration. Um, and the only difference between alkoxy and oxymercuration is the reagent that we use in step one. In alkoxy, in oxymercuration, demercuration, this reagent right here was water. In oxymercuration, demercuration, because we were using water, we added a hydrogen and an OH across our double bond. In alkoxy mercuration demercuration, we're using an alcohol instead of water. So that means that we are adding an RO and an H across our double bond. Here's a generic example. The other reagents are exactly the same. Um, and this ROH group, I'm just going to kind of highlight this, puts a hydrogen and an OR group on our double bond. Um, if you recall the conditions of oxymercuration, demercuration, this is a Markovnikov addition reaction. And it proceeds with no carbocation rearrangement. And you can really use any uh, alcohol that you want in this reaction. So here we have one example that we're looking at. In this reaction, we're taking away the carbon-oxygen double bond. We're creating a couple of new bonds um, on the carbon-oxygen double bond. Following Markovnikov's rule, one of these positions is going to get a hydrogen. One of them is going to get the OR group. The hydrogen is going to go with the other hydrogen. So the hydrogen will go right here. I'm just going to write it temporarily. Our OR group is OET in this reaction. So we've got an OET group going right there. And it really isn't okay to draw just one hydrogen atom on this carbon out here. So we need to draw all three of the hydrogen atoms out there or just don't draw any of them at all um, like that. So there is our OET group. And if it bothers you to kind of do a mixture of line structure and condensed notation, there it is drawn out in whole.